Hello everyone and welcome to the Film Dirt Lounge. Tonight I decided to take a little trip down memory lane and revisit an absolute classic from Ridley Scott, it's Alien. Now 20th Century Fox always categorised this as a horror sci-fi, as they did with all the Alien films, all the solo Alien films. And I think this being a horror series is no more evident in the first film. I mean, it really does define everything about a horror film within the backdrop of a science fiction story. So the great cast playing the crew of the Nostromo are Sigourney Weaver as Ripley, John Hurt as Kane, Veronica Cartwright as Lambert, Yafit Koto plays Parker, Harry Dean Stanton plays Brett, Tom Skerritt plays Captain Dallas, and Ian Holm plays Ash. And also Bellagi Badeo plays the alien. For this review, I decided to watch the director's cut. And overall, I think the differences are very minor. There's one good scene of Dallas and Brett being cocooned at the end. And various other scenes, uh, I think they were actually shortened just to get through with a little bit more pace. So really, it depends what kind of experience you want with a film like this. I really like the atmospheric nature of the film, where we hold on certain empty corridors. And it's really immersive in that way. But also I like the aspect of getting to scenes a little bit more briskly, considering this is a horror film and it does get a bit hectic at the end. I think it's really two versions of the same thing. And I had a great experience with the director's cut. I remember back in the day I used to own the widescreen edition of the theatrical cut on VHS and DVD. And I think both of those became very worn out. And I did revisit both versions of the film, I think over lockdown. And even that was quite a while ago, surprisingly. So as I mentioned, I've always loved the atmospheric and the slower paced nature of the film, especially during the start. We established the empty corridors and the cavernous nature of the Nostromo, which seems really big for a spaceship. And it's almost like a power station floating in space, doesn't it? There's a very Star Wars nature to it, where it definitely looks dirty and grimy and lived in. And there's even puddles everywhere and dripping water as if it was a derelict warehouse on Earth. But no, it's a huge spaceship with presumably many hiding places for an uninvited guest. So even though there's seven members of the crew, um, it is seven, isn't it? One, two, three, six, seven. So it's quite a large crew, really. There is still the feeling of loneliness. Obviously, the huge spaceship plays a part in that. They're very lonely and detached out there, floating in space. And also, I love the kind of mundane nature of their conversations. And they all look natural. They're all butting into each other and you know, waiting for each other to speak. And it, it doesn't look like a theatre production where people are reading from scripts. It all looks pretty genuine. I think the look of the film, the look of the sets, uh, the look of the model effects... I think are all very real looking with some excellent cinematography. Nothing looks like a set, really. It actually does look like they're in a power station. And that's also why I think it's always good to revisit the film. There's a lot of rewatchability, not only because of the atmospheric nature, but also rewatching the mannerisms of Ash, knowing what we know now, that he's an android placed there by the company to ensure the safe retrieval of the alien by any means. And also, I didn't mind the whole effect of Ash being uh, dismembered at the end. I always thought it was a good-looking effect, and the look of the headpiece always looked like Ian Holm to me. Well, as close as you can expect a, a broken appliance to be. So, I also need to talk about the chestburster scene and, and the little alien puppet. It looks good, and the scene is full of horror, and it does give the audience that sensation of horror and something grotesque and awful happening. But there's a part of me that also thinks the alien is cute. <laughs> and the quick cutting of the whole scene does help a lot. So it does make off very quickly. That is, in my opinion, the only real weak point of the film, in an otherwise perfect film. And also I've got to add that, with this being a really old film now, it's, it's surprising, isn't it? This came out in 1979, so a lot of time has gone by. And when you revisit old films like this, it's just, you know, really sad knowing that a lot of the cast now are sadly no longer with us, including Bellagi Badeo, who was in the alien suit, 
there's a great urban myth, and I hope it's true, where someone from the production crew discovered him in a pub, and he was the right height and the right build. And it sounds like one of those classic cases where someone approaches you in a bar and hands you a card and says, hey, do you want to work in a movie? <laughs> so I really hope that story is true. So I've always really loved this film, and I think it works because of Sigourney Weaver's superb performance. She looks totally believable. Even that scene where they're interrogating Ash, you can see the anger and the disappointment in her face as Ash surprisingly reveals all. And I was a bit surprised why Ash would suddenly do that. You'd think he'd keep a lot more secrets, but he was quite honest in the end, wasn't he? But even considering the revelations of the alien itself, we still really don't know much about it other than its very basic life cycle of planting aliens in hosts. We don't really know much about this space jockey. I mean, they just investigated what they found and didn't find too many answers, I don't think. So a lot of the background stuff is still ambiguous, because we're really concentrating on the threat of the alien itself. So even though it's the start of a series, it's a very small story within itself, and for that I think the whole thing works. So let's give this a score. I'm going to go straight in with five stars. Absolutely no hesitation. This is a fantastic film. And that is for both a director's cut and a theatrical cut. Whichever one you watch from your box set, you'll have an amazing experience. And I do like Ridley Scott's films in general. I do like his directing style. I reviewed one of his films on the channel previously, Gladiator, which is an absolute classic. And I think Blade Runner has to come soon at some point. And I'll feature that on the channel as soon as I can get to it. Because coming next will be Aliens. And I'll aim to bring that to the channel very soon. But for now, thanks very much for joining me for this little look back at 1979's Alien. Join me again soon by liking and subscribing. And all the best to you. Take care.